What up, everybody? It's your girl, Sherry's Joy, and I am here. I'm here today, and this is actually, I guess, what you could call the pilot episode of Bookmarked by the DigiCast. Um, I decided to do this show because I am an avid reader. I have always been an avid reader. I, I absolutely love books. I enjoy reading books. There's nothing like, you know, a good stormy day or night and just being cozy with a book and your favorite blanket and something to drink, you know, like a coffee or tea or good, I don't know, seltzer water um, and just reading a really good book. I love a good page turner. So I've been reading a lot lately. I... Um, you know, I, I read a lot <laughs> before I became a mom. Uh, I would read like two books a week, one book a week, you know, depending on the actual book. And then I became a mom and my reading kind of went to a halt. Um, well, it slowed down and then it went to a halt. And now I um, have children and they are older now. 16 and 17 my stepdaughter is 17 my daughter is 16 and I am able to read and go on about my business because they can fend for themselves yay um but anyway so I'm an avid reader and I really love reading and so what what more you know what what a better thing what what am I trying to say what is something I can do to share my adventures well, why not talk about it on a podcast? So here I am. Thank you for listening. I do enjoy everybody who, um, you know, takes their time to listen to me or us as the DigiCast, my awesome husband, DJ Awesome Rob, and, uh, or just plain old Awesome Rob. I don't know. <laughs> I do know, but you know, he's got different aliases. It's fine. Anyway, the DigiCast. So to all of those who have been following us and listening to us, reading up on us, we truly appreciate it and thank you. This is actually a solo show. I am, you know, doing this on my own. This is my little side project. And, um, you know, I appreciate you just taking your time and listening. So here we go. The first episode of bookmarked is going to be about well this is the first episode of bookmarked um i am currently reading a book oh before i begin sorry full-on spoilers this is not a review show so much as a recap show um i'm going to actually just be talking about the book as if we're having a conversation but it's kind of like one-sided because i'm doing a podcast so how I'm going to do it for now um, is I'm going to split it into two parts for shorter books and then possibly three parts for your longer books that are like 1,200 plus pages. Um, so the first part, I'm going to discuss the first half of the book that I'm currently reading. And then part two, I will discuss the second half of the book. Um, and this is full on spoilers. I am seriously going to talk details about the book. So if you would like to read the book before I, before, you know, you listen to the show, the title of the book that I am going to discuss right now is called New Girl in Town, The Olivia Knight Mysteries, book one of 14 by L. Gray and K.S. Gray. This book, I was, it was, I have a Kindle. My husband bought me a Kindle for Mother's Day a few years ago. Um, I went kicking and screaming, just like any electronics. You know, when it was time to switch over to a smartphone, kicking and screaming. Anytime I need to get a new phone, kicking and screaming because I like what I like. I'm telling you, there is nothing like a, the smell of a bookstore. I absolutely love that new book smell. And um, so he bought me a Kindle for Mother's Day. And I was like, I don't want this. <laughs> it was a paperweight. It's like, I want to actually hold a book. No, you know, just try it. You'll like it. No, I want to hold a book. 
So during the pandemic, I started reading books again. And I was like, I absolutely love this. I don't have to worry about bookshelf space. I don't have to worry about, you know, bookmarks. This is this is great. I have everything I need right here. So I have a Kindle Paper White and I absolutely love it. It is one of the best gifts my husband could have bought me or has bought me so far. Um, it's great. And now being almost 45 years old and having bad eyes, uh, it's better on the eyes. I pick up an actual book to read and I can't read it. I have to get large print in order for me to read it and most books don't really come in large print. A lot of them do, but you know, why go through all that? I just have it on the Kindle and I can just adjust my font size and brightness. It's wonderful. I love it. Okay, so back to the book. Book title, New Girl in Town. So this book was recommended to me on my Kindle through the advertising. Some people hate the advertising on their Kindle. Um, you know, on the, I have, a, like I said, a paper way. I kind of like it because it gives me suggestions for the next book to read. Sure, I have my favorite authors and my favorite people that I, you know, that I like to read. Um, but having the advertisements like, hey, you like murder mysteries. Here is this murder mystery. Check this out. You know, and I check it out. I read a sample and I'm like, cool. So this is actually one of those books. And I will say it. It is an author that I have not read before. This is the first time that I've read her book. And I've actually purchased this book. It's my Kindle said in 2022. <laughs> so it's been sitting on the back burner for a few years or a couple of years now. It's 2024. Um, you know, that doesn't mean anything. That just means that I was reading other things before I got to this or in, you know, it just kind of gets to the put back and back and back and back. Um, so the immediate plot of this book or the actual plot of this book is Olivia Knight. She's an FBI agent and she just purchased, a, a um, like an empty Ranger's cabin in the woods. And one night she's coming home from work and everything. She's winding down and she hears this noise like she's she's headed upstairs for bed or you know whatever she's going to retire upstairs she hears this noise and she's like looking around like what is this noise oh my goodness and finally she sees a um you know well actually stop pause i apologize again pilot episode bear with me i'm sorry so what actually happens at the beginning of the book the epilogue is there's this girl woman girl we're not really sure who is you know not really being force fed but she's given like mac and cheese and toast you know as a meal so you're you're kind of under the assumption that she's somewhere you know you know not at her own free will she's somewhere she's captured um and she's like somewhere and the person we don't know if it's a man or a woman the person is like Hey, I know mac and cheese is your favorite food, so I made it for you just the way you like it, and toast just the way you like it. Eat it. And she's like, I don't want it, you know, screaming, I don't want it. Why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? So you get the impression that she's been taken, or, you know, she's being held captive. And the captor is like, uh, <laughs> you're going to eat this. And, you know, he's like, very, he or she is very patient at first. But then starts to get really, you know, upset and angry. And the girl is just like, why are you doing this to me? I don't want this. Yada, yada, yada. End scene. And then, um, you know, then we meet Olivia Knight, the FBI agent. So she's on her way upstairs to retire for the evening. She hears this noise and she happens to see movement out, out the side of her eye, out this window. And it is a girl. And she's like staring. She looks so disheveled and scared and frightened. And Olivia is like, oh my God, you know, and she's, she's like goes to her, not immediately. Like she's very, very cautious. She's, you know, an FBI agent. She gets her pistol and everything or her gun, whatever. And she's like, are you okay? Do you need help? What's going on? And she calls 911 and she's like, hey, I got a girl here who is, you know, very traumatized. She's got lacerations on her and she looks like she's definitely been held captive 
send someone. So 911, send somebody. They take her to the hospital. And she's like Jane Doe at this moment. She can't, she's, you know, unconscious. She's, she can't talk. She's like, um, not cautious, conscience. Bleh. She is not conscience. Cautious conscience. Why can't I talk this evening? <laughs> anyway, she's under and she is, um, not able. So obviously she's not able to talk. So they don't know anything her identity or anything like that but clearly you can tell that she's had some sort of torture so come to find out you know we fast forward a little bit we don't know if this is the same girl that was in the epilogue we have no idea we don't know um but now you know it's like the plot is starting to come together here because it's like okay so we have this mysterious girl, she's wandering in the woods. Like, what in the world is going on? We don't know. Um, we're going to find out, though. So I want to be on the case, you know, Miss Knight, and because I found her and all this other stuff. So they find her parents. Her parents are in Seattle. This is northern Virginia where these woods are. Bell, uh, Bell Grove, Virginia. I've never heard of it. I'm from Virginia, so I might be made up, might not be. Let me know. I didn't Google it, so I didn't even think to until now. Maybe I will. Anyways, so she is, um, you know, how would she get here? She's from Seattle. So fast forward a little bit. They, they fly the parents in. Apparently, she's been missing for some time, a couple of weeks. And the parents had, like, I think a $50,000 reward for her and Olivia goes to meet the parents and the parents are like, we need to be alone with our, with our daughter. Um, her name is Amelia. We need to be alone with Amelia. Please leave us alone. We'll get you, we'll give you your reward later. And Olivia's like, no, no, I'm not here for a reward. My name is Olivia Knight. I'm the FBI agent. I found her. I'll be working on this case. Yada, yada, yada. So a little bit of background with Olivia is she has a sis had a sister named Veronica who was killed and actually funny and I don't know what kind of a coincidence this is Olivia is actually from Seattle and Veronica you know lived in Seattle and Veronica had a husband in Seattle and the husband's name is Paxton Paxton and he's a detective in Seattle so Olivia tells the parents, you know what, in order for us to kind of figure some stuff out, let's go back to Seattle. I have a detective there that I can talk to to get some answers and kind of, you know, get this investigation rolling since it's cross states. This is now an FBI issue. So she goes back and she talks to Paxton and she's talking to him, trying to figure things out. And, you know, then she's like missing her sister. Her sister got into this car accident um, and she died alone. So, you know, Olivia is like, well, I don't know if my sister was murdered. I don't know if she really got into a car accident. We don't really know. But we don't really get an idea or understanding of why she would think that. So we haven't gotten there yet. Um, just kind of like stipulation here. So she flies back to Virginia. She's home. And the headquarters, you know, her lieutenant and everything tells her that she's going to be working with another agent. His name is Brock, and that's going to be her partner on this case. They are also working with the local police. Her name is Maggie. Um, she knows the area, obviously, and she's, you know, helping out because she's the local part of everything. And then we have another missing person who comes along. Um, well, she doesn't come along, but the police are like, hey, we got another missing girl. So they meet the parents of this missing girl. Her name is Sophia. And the parents are assholes. They're like, no, she's not missing. She ran off with her boyfriend. So this girl is 15. Oh, back up. I'm sorry. So Amelia is autistic. She is a teenager. She's 15. She's autistic. And she can't talk. She can't express her feelings. She can't express anything um she's not able to really communicate effectively or at all um about you know anything in general and especially this traumatizing event and now she's been traumatized and she's terrified so even more so she doesn't want to talk 
So that's going to be tough to try to figure out that situation there. Now we have Sophia that's missing. And the parents are like, no, she ran off with her boyfriend. Her boyfriend's a low-life loser, you know, adult. He's 19, she's 15, and blah, 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 blah. But she left her phone at home. Okay, I'm like, well, what 15-year-old is going to leave their phone at home? Mother says, her mother's name is Alice. She says, oh, well, we, she started leaving her phone at home because I had a GPS app on her phone where I could follow her to see where she's at. And, you know, she got hip to that. So she just started leaving her phone at home. But I know she's with that boyfriend of hers. So the police are, you know, Olivia and Brock, Brock is the partner, are like, okay, well, where's the boyfriend live? So they go to the boyfriend's house to question him. He's like, I love, I love Sophia. And, you know, I would never hurt her. I would never do anything to her. I, I'm, I'm really fond of her. I really care about her, not love. I really care about her. It's not like what you think. I'm 19. She's 15. We're going to wait for a couple of years where she's legal, where, you know, older and we can be together. But I really do care about her. I would never hurt her type of thing. And Brock is like, you know, you scumbag, you're 19 years old. What are you doing with a child? What are you doing being with a child? It's not like that, sir. It's not like that, sir. Well, she's a child and this, that. Like, he's really aggressive. He's really, like, really upset. Meanwhile, Olivia doesn't think that... You, Olivia thinks that even though his name is Craig, is 19 years old, he doesn't have the mindset of, like, someone who would plot a murder or plot, like, a kidnapping and take her away and stuff like that. Like, she's... He... The character is really written as not so smart maybe if you could say that I guess I can say that it's my podcast um but, and if we're not talking about a real person here we're talking about a character so he's he's like he's his his elevator does not go all the way to the third floor or the top floor if you will um but he really does care about her and, you know, and you can tell. So he's, so Olivia's like telling Brock to like back down, you know, back down from him. And you know, she gets him to calm down and all these other things. And then, of course, you know, amongst all of this, you've got your typical romance thing happening between a male and female partner. I mean, I guess that's going to be like your love story of the book. Um, they haven't really gotten there yet. But we have heard Olivia or we've read Olivia talk about, you know, how her feelings, you know, how her feelings are growing. She not, not maybe not feelings, but like, I don't know, I guess you could call it lust or whatever, you know, just developing for him. You know, like one night they were working so late, she fell asleep like at his B&B. &B. He's staying at an Airbnb and they keep calling it B&B. &B. I mean, that's what we call it. And so, you know, and she stayed there overnight and like he's bringing her coffee and he's taking care of her. He knows how she wants her coffee now. You know, they've been working on this case and they're together. So, you know, I guess maybe feelings will develop. Then they pulled a stake, did a stake out one night and they got really close. You know, they were like messing around with each other, talking about, oh, when I first met you, you were a jerk. Well, when I first met you, I thought you were, you know, stuck up and all this other crap. Well, what do you think now? Now, not so much. And then, you know, they stop that whole stop scene and they're like talking and they're face to face so close that they could kiss each other type of thing. But then something happens and it breaks away their trance and you know, they go off. <laughs> so there's that. Um, so we haven't really gotten to that love story yet. I am 50% through this book. I'm on page 145 out of 298. And, and um, you know, they're searching in the woods for clues and evidence Apparently, Sophia meets Craig at this, like, tree where all the kids go to hang out in the middle of the woods to make out and just hang out and be, and be teenagers. Um, and inside of this tree, Olivia found, like, in the hollow of the tree, this, like, tarp that has baby teeth and, a, like, a keepsake and just some other, like, keepsakes. And it's weird. There's like a doll, a rag doll. There's like some locks of hair. It looks like it's a serial killer's trophy type of situation, but not really. It's weird. It's only mentioned once. We haven't gone back to it. I don't 
know <laughs> what in the world um, is going on with that. So thank you for bearing with me. I know that explanation was all over the place. This is my first episode. I will try to be more organized on the next episode. Um, but just to kind of like recap, we have Olivia Knight and her partner Brock. They are investigating these two missing people. Um, it could possibly be three because we don't know if the girl in the epilogue is Amelia or Sophia. We're not sure. Um, so possibly three missing girls, definitely two missing girls. And we have one set of parents who thought that, you know, their child ran off with the boyfriend, but then realizes that she was taken. Then we have the other set of parents who are from Seattle and their daughter is autistic and was taken from Seattle and brought all the way to Northern Virginia. And we don't know what's going on with Craig, the boyfriend. Um, that's kind of where we are with this. I am going to guess that Olivia and Brock are going to hook up somehow. This is book one of 14. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm going to read all 14 books, but I probably, depending on how this one goes, I might read the next one. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my guess here. This is, this is my guess that Olivia and Brock are going to hook up, you know, somehow. And I don't think that Craig is the kidnapper. I don't think he has anything to do with it. Um, not on purpose anyway. Now he might have, you know, done something by accident. I think that Sophia could be the girl in the epilogue. I know it wasn't Amelia because Amelia is autistic and remember, and you know, she's autistic and she can't communicate. So remember the girl in the epilogue was screaming, why are you doing this to me? I don't want this and all this other stuff. So that girl could be Sophia or it could be a third person. Now, as far as Olivia's sister, Veronica, I'm going to go with, sure, she was murdered. And I think she was murdered by her husband, Paxton. Um, so we possibly have two separate stories going on here. Well, maybe three. The love story, the past, and these kidnapped girls. So I am interested to see how this is going to end. I think I'm going to, it's Friday night. It's, you know, I don't know if the date matters, but it is April 26th. And it is Friday night and I might read. I do not know. If anything, I will be done with this book before the weekend is over. And so, again, I just want to thank you for listening. Thank you for hanging out with me. And if you have any suggestions, any comments, any critiques, any ideas, please, please feel free to share them with me. I would really appreciate it. Again, like I said, this is the pilot episode of Bookmarked. I'm Sherry's Joy, part of the Digicast, the second part, the second half of the Digicast. You can find us on YouTube at the Digicast One. We have a blog called the Digicast. It's um, on Substack, so it's the Digicast.substack.com. We have a Flipboard. Uh, it's not. It's, uh, it doesn't have much up there. We just started it. So you can search for the, Digi the Digicast on Flipboard. You can find us on Facebook, the Digicast. We're on Instagram as the Digicast. We're on Spotify as the Digicast. And if you are interested in this book, please use our Amazon affiliate link. Um, you know, it's in the description and you will find this book and other awesome products. And if you have an idea, or not an idea, but if you have a book suggestion, I am up for listening. I am up for ideas. I love murder mysteries, psychological thrillers, historical fiction. I am not big. I will be honest. I don't like comedy books and I am not big on love books, romance novels. The Nicholas Sparks, been there, done that. I, um, and I was only using him as an example, but I, you know, if you want to suggest it, if there is a good one, I love good page turners. So, you know, romance book, I could, I could still read it. 
Um, I will tell you, I'm, I'm not big on comedy, but if you have a good book and you have a suggestion, I am more than willing to try. And I do do, I do read autobiographies as well. Um, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for listening. And again, you know, this was part one of Bookmarks. I'm Sherry's Joy, the second part, the second half of the Digicast. And I appreciate you. Just thank you for listening and love the world.